5.31, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Britannia Mori. I'm the ICANN Vice President of Marketing and Communications. Thank you so much for welcoming uh, for coming tonight to our on-track uh, evening for sophomores. So welcome class of 2026. Uh, so tonight we're going to do um, a couple of different things. I'm going to start off by going over some of the focal points that you can be thinking about as uh, sophomores this year. And then we've got a couple guest speakers before we transition into our panel discussion. Um, if at any point in time you have any questions, you can jump, uh, pop them into the chat. Uh, watch your chat because we will be uh, dropping some uh, helpful links as we talk about different things and definitely uh, monitoring the questions that are in there. So please use the chat and we'll go ahead and get started. So for those who may not be familiar with ICANN, maybe this is your first uh, introduction to us as uh, beginning high school. Uh, we are an education nonprofit located here in the state of Iowa. And our entire mission is around uh, helping high school students or Iowans find success in career, college, and life. So everything that we do is involved with the career and college planning process and helping you make the best decision uh, for your next steps. Some materials that we have available that uh, are really helpful for sophomores and I know the links for these two materials are gonna be dropped into the chat here in a minute. Uh, our sophomore countdown calendar, we go month by month, uh, what things you should be thinking about doing as, as you're a sophomore going through this year. So that will keep you on track for planning for career, for college, for financial aid, scholar, all of that stuff. It'll keep you on track with things you should be thinking about. And then uh, next to that is our life after high school guide. This covers all aspects of the career and college planning process. So both of those have been linked in the chat, so you can download those and uh, they'll be, you can reference things that we talk about tonight in, in those two pieces. Uh, a big thing sophomore year, things that you should start thinking about is um, you will take a career assessment. You started uh, when you were in eighth grade, you took your first one as you were mapping out your four-year plan for high school. Your school should be having you take one of these uh, at least once a year as part of that four-year planning process. Your career assessment is a really great tool for you to not just take it to do it because you have to in school, but go through those assessments and go through the results and see what it tells you about yourself and then use that as you're moving forward and setting goals. So a career assessment, if you don't remember the one you took at school or you want to just take a different one, um, we use the one uh, from ACT called uh, ACT Plans. And it's a free assessment that will help you align your interests and your values uh, and your skill set, what you want to do with different careers and majors, education and training pathways and things like that. Um, understanding those assessment results and where your interests kind of fall in the, in the big scheme of careers can help you set goals. And setting goals now, it doesn't mean that you're making a decision right now as a sophomore, um, but it does give you some direction and help you identify where your interests are so that you can explore that over the next couple of years. And that will help you make an informed decision when you decide what your next steps are going to be after high school. Career planning is definitely an ongoing process. So just setting goals helps you in that planning process. We're not asking you as sophomores in high school to say, this is the career I want. It's too early for that. What we are asking you um, is just start thinking about it. Start using those assessment results to see where you're at right now, and then explore those things through classes and, and uh, other things like that. Uh, using your uh, career planning and your assessment results can help you understand what skill sets you may need to build over the next few years that you can do while you're in high school. It can help you understand different subjects and topics you might want to explore in class. It will help you gain different experiences and uh, having an idea about the, the career areas you might be interested in will help you also talk to your parents about financial planning. Uh, not having goals or starting too late in the process in that goal setting uh, can increase your overall costs and debt because you may not, you could make some decisions now that lessen that by planning. Uh, when we talk about assessment results and career areas, so in Iowa, they kind of lump all of the different careers into 16 pathways, and then those pathways are put into six career clusters. And your assessment results are going to kind of tell you which area you can, you fit. And so the first three here, any career that has anything to do with agriculture, natural resources, horticulture, food production, the environment, that's all part of the ag, food, and natural resources cluster. We have a cluster on applied science, technology, engineering, and math. 
And then there's a cluster on business, finance, marketing, and management. Um, so it, it's going to tell you all about the careers in those three different areas and how they might relate to each other. So you may, you may score very high on your assessment in business, finance, marketing, and management, but maybe the only thing you think of is accounting and you're like, I don't want to be an accountant. Well, exploring a cluster is going to help you see other careers that maybe you're not familiar with. Uh, same thing with the, the next uh, three clusters, health sciences, human services, and then information systems. You know, human services is anything to do with education and training, hospitality, government, public assistance, law. Information systems is all about communications, the arts, and IT. So understanding career clusters also helps you understand the, all of the ed education and training options that are available to you after high school. So you should consider careers that you're interested in based on some of those assessment results, based on individual experiences, and then start looking at what types of education and training solutions meet those career qualifications. If you understand the different options that are available to you, that helps you in that planning process. Do I need a one or two year degree? Do I need a four year degree? Is it more of a registered apprenticeship situation? Uh, do I need beyond a bachelor's degree? Um, learning about these options early in high school helps you prepare for those options. Uh, another way, uh, beginning your sophomore year, most times you can start doing things like job shadows and internships or planning for job shadows and internships junior or senior year. Getting hands-on experience in career areas that might interest you while you're in high school um, is an excellent way to either solidify an area that you're interested in. Yep, I really liked that experience. I think I could do really well in this area. I liked what I was doing every day. Or it could show you, I thought I liked that, but I really was, I was bored or I hated what we were doing. It did not look interesting. Um, the part that I thought I was going to like is only 10% of what we did and the rest of it's boring. It helps you kind of solidify those decisions. You might be crossing things off your list. You might be saying, yep, this is definitely the direction I want to further explore. So looking at um, some of those opportunities, talk to your school counselors, and then um, you can talk to the I Iowa Intermediary Network, which is um, part of your area community college. There's a connection person uh, between them, the business world, and your school, and they can help you find job shadow opportunities. Other ways to get hands-on experience, you can start volunteering. And there are a couple websites that are listed where you can search out different volunteer opportunities to explore uh, careers, to build skills. Uh, volunteering is also a great uh, thing to put on an activities resume, which then later ends up on scholarship applications. Uh, but volunteering helps you build skills. Uh, you can also join clubs, uh, do extracurricular activities, get a part-time job. All of those things will help enhance your interests, teach you about different things, and help you build skills. Uh, another thing, as sophomores, you have uh, almost three full years of high school left. So you're, you're, you've got this semester, you know what you're taking, but you have a lot of time still to adjust your four-year plans. So you should definitely be reviewing your four-year plan. Um, that's the plan that outlines all the classes you're going to take each year to graduate. Make sure you're keeping track of that plan. It shouldn't be something that you just, oh, yep, I know what my cl classes are. I already did that. Does it fit what you're interested in? You got to meet your high school graduation requirements, but you can do a lot more within that four-year plan to help you explore your interests, make sure you're meeting college admission requirements um, if that's in your future. So um, aligning your four-year plan with your career pathway is also a great way to further explore that pathway. Maybe use some of your electives if you uh, end up in the health sciences cluster, for example, taking some of the health classes or making sure you get biology and anatomy as your science. Uh, that will help you further explore in that area. And you can work with your school counselor to, to uh, talk through your four-year plan, talk about your career interests, your assessments, and make sure that these plans are aligning with where your interests are. Uh, you want to look at, uh, when you're looking at that four-year plan, it's not just about what does it take to graduate high school? What are your next steps? And that's why understanding what all those education and training options after high school, understanding what those are and how they might fit into the careers that you're interested in helps you know what optimum preparation might be. But if you don't know what you want to do, and that's fine, um, there is this chart that gives optimum preparation for going to college. Doesn't matter what you're going to major in. If you do these things, you're going to, you're going to be more prepared. Um, taking four years of all of your core courses is ideal if you're going on to college. 
Um, to graduate high school, you typically only need three years of math, science, and social studies. Sometimes it's only two years of social studies. It really depends. But really taking that senior year off is not the ideal situation for math and math and science because you're going to have to take all of these core subjects as general education requirements regardless of what you major in. So optimum preparation is to make sure you have at least four years of each of those core subjects. Um, these are recommended as the best way to prepare for college level academics. Um, it's also shown that college bound students, especially if you're interested in careers that are heavy in the math and science, uh, any, any STEM careers, taking that fourth year is gonna better prepare you for those courses that you take at the college level. There are also a lot of studies out there that show that if you take a year off, it might put you in remedial classes at the college level. Um, if you don't score high enough, you don't, maybe you don't remember, maybe you took your last science class fall semester of your junior year. And so now it's been a year and a half since you've taken um, a science class or a math class. Um, you may have to make that transition and take a remedial course. And remedial courses, typically, you are paying for them because they are college classes, but you don't get them as college credit. So that can be a setback and, and expand how long. So it's really important to understand an idea of what you want to do after high school um, in terms of your education and training and just prepare optimally for what those opportunities might be. Um, there's a lot of difference also between graduation and admission requirements. So understanding where you might want to go and starting to kind of talk with your school counselor, look at some of those different colleges. And I know we'll get into that with the, the panel discussion Q&A, um, but it's just an example of how admission and graduation requirements can differ. So these are our three state universities, and they all have different uh, foreign language requirements or world language requirements. So Iowa State requires two years of a world language for admission but they're not required for certain college admissions. So you get into the general arts and sciences, college of engineering, you have to have a world language. But if you're going into ag, business, design, or human services, you don't. But at the University of Iowa, you need two years regardless. That is just the admission requirement. And at UNI, they're not required for admission. However, two years is a graduation requirement. Now, all the colleges have different requirements. But most of the time, if you take foreign language in high school, you've met the college requirements. So it's important to think about these things when you're looking at your four-year plan. Can I just take at least two years in high school and then I've met some of the minimum requirements, not only for admission, but also maybe graduation? Do I just take all four years and know that those are really solid core courses? Uh, I'm gonna be that much further ahead and I won't maybe have to take it at the college level. That's a, that's a, a big conversation that we have with a lot of students about you know, did you take foreign language in high school? Um, it's it's sometimes more recommended to take it in high school and not in college unless that's going to be your major. For students that might be thinking, I'm headed career training, maybe none of that optimum stuff applies to me. What should you do with your four-year plan? There are supplemental courses that you can take in addition to your graduation requirements uh, that will give you an intro to that career and technical education side. You can look at intro to ACE, which is architecture, construction, and engineering. You can look at engineering concepts. You could take those health science classes. Um, so look at some of the CTE opportunities that your school might offer. And if they fit into you know, your career interests, that might be an option. You can also investigate career academy programs that may be available that offer hands-on learning opportunities or other career preparation experiences. Again, this is a great conversation to have with your school counselor about what options are available to you in your school. Really the moral of the story is have a well-rounded academic experience in high school so that whatever choice you decide to make come senior year, you've, you're prepared for it. Um, challenge yourself with different courses, follow that pathway recommendation so that you can explore while you're in high school. Try and go beyond whatever your, your basic high school graduation requirements are. If you're doing optimum preparation because you know you're looking at that, that four-year program or you have a, a one or two-year career training option in your mind, look at those CTE options in school, see what you can learn ahead of time, and then participate in extracurricular activities, volunteer, or work part-time. For parents that are joining us tonight, how can you best help your students? Uh, provide support and guidance, but now is the time to start avoiding the hover. Um, your student needs to start learning um, their own time management. They need to start learning about money management. They need to start you know, making sure they have some life skills. And part of that, as hard as it is, 
is to not have mom and dad do everything for them every day. Um, start making sure that they're taking on some responsibility so that when they do take that next step, they're ready. Um, some things that are really helpful for students to know when they graduate, how to do laundry without making their whites turn pink. Um, I didn't know that. And so my first load of laundry on my own was pink. Basic car maintenance, if they're taking a car to campus, some basic cooking, uh, lots of, of student housing now has, you know, kitchenettes and things. So maybe that's something that they might want to learn how to do. Time management, do they have a personal calendar or an app? Are they tracking and, and at least knowing when their bills are due? Maybe they're not paying for everything themselves yet, but are they aware of the process to do that? And then um, prioritizing, when is, when is enough enough? Are they overbooking themselves, underbooking themselves? Um, teaching them how to say no is, is a good lesson as well. And then those education, those people skills, character education. Um, are they articulate, well-dressed, professional? Do they have the ability to present themselves? Um, practice doing handshakes, practice talking with eye contact. Um, I know we're in the generation of, of tablets and cell phones, and it's hard for kids sometimes to look up and have that face-to-face -face conversation. That is a really important skill to have. Um, so practice that with your kids. Um, public speaking, respect, what's appropriate uh, with what kind of audience. And then that money management aspect. Um, do they have a checking and savings account? Do they know how to track um, and use online banking? Do they know what a budget is? Uh, do they understand credit? Do they have, will they have a credit card when they go off to college? I'm not saying give your sophomore a credit card right now. I'm not saying that. Just saying teach them the process of money management so that when they do get on their own, they don't stumble into some of those, those pitfalls that many college students find themselves in. Finally, as I uh, finish up my, my segment, I just wanna remind you guys of some of the uh, services that we provide for free that can help you in this planning process. Uh, if you're not signed up for our e-alerts, I would recommend doing that. We'll send out grade level specific alerts. We also do a tip of the week. It's a video tip that comes out every Thursday on different topics and things throughout the year to be you know, aware of. We're also on social media, so you can follow our Facebook page or our Twitter X page or our Instagram page. And then we do Wednesday webinars and all of our webinars and presentations and things, we try and record those and make those available on our YouTube channel and on our website. So our website uh, is here, up here in the, the top on every page, it'll always say resource library. You can go on there and find all kinds of resources, uh, planning guides, uh, worksheets, all kinds of things that can help you. Those two uh, materials that were linked in the chat earlier are going to be found in the resource library as well. This is also where if you ever want to uh, talk with one of our student success advisors uh, about career planning, college planning, financial aid, anything, um, this is also where you can come on here and schedule a free appointment with one of our advisors. And those appointments are both in person or virtual. So if you're not near one of our centers, it doesn't mean we can't uh, talk to you. So you can always schedule one of those appointments. Uh, finally, I want to put a plug in. Uh, sophomore year is a great time to start thinking about college fairs. And the biggest one in the state, we host that every fall, and it happens to be this Sunday in uh, Altoona, which is where Adventureland is in Des Moines. So it goes from one to three. It is a free event. You do not have to register or sign up to attend. You just show up at the Prairie Meadows Conference Center on Sunday, and we have 96 exhibitors who are really excited to talk to you about the future. And those exhibitors are colleges and universities from nine different states. We have business and industry representatives to talk about the different career clusters, what they look for when they want to hire um, new employees. We have some student service organizations. We have apprenticeships and we have um, a military representative. So it really is a one stop shop for all of those next steps. And it's a really great time in your high school career to start having some of those conversations. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to one of our guests, Shelly Adams from ISL Education Lending. Thanks, Britt. All really great information. Uh, as Britt mentioned, I am Shelly Adams. Uh, my title at ISL Education Lending is uh, Program Administrator and Communication Specialist. So I want to talk about the program that I administer, uh, which is SP3 Student Planning Pointers for Parents. So it is specifically uh, designed for parents. Um, it's a free email service for those parents who have students in eighth through 12th grade. And we touch on a lot of different topics similarly to ICANN. 
Um, so we're going to pinpoint those at, um, at strategic times of the year, as well as by the grade level of the student. Um, coming up for 10th graders, uh, next week's article will include some information about uh, visiting colleges unofficially, so to speak. So the college fair, I would I would very much uh, you know promote that um, just so that you can get an idea of what colleges are out there. Many of them have certain niche uh, programs, and and even if you need to go out of state for those, it's awesome. Uh, it's an awesome experience to just see what's out there and get a sense of that. Um, in tenth grade, we also talk about all of those options that exist for students after high school, um, not just the four-year traditional undergrad experience, but uh, apprenticeships and certificates, military options, and so forth. So I encourage um, all those parents who are on tonight to sign up for SP3. Um, if you um, are a student without a parent, uh, please direct your parent or guardian to sign up at sp3.org. Very easy sign up, as I mentioned, it's free. Uh, we send out two emails each month uh, based on those relevant topics by grade level and time of year. And then we're going to direct uh, parents to certain conversation pointers and, and uh, different things like that that can prompt some conversations between um, the student and the parent. And it's it's all designed to complement what ICANN is doing as well as what uh, school counselors are talking about with their students at school. Uh, the best part, though, about my job is that uh, we have a prize component attached to SP3. Every quarter, we will um, randomly draw 40 participants to receive a $250 deposit to a college savings plan, and that would be a 529 plan. Uh, for our SP3 winners, the 529 plan can be anyone that they already have open. Um, it might be at a in a different state, which is fine or it might be our state-sponsored um, and managed program here in Iowa, which is College Savings Iowa uh, 529 plan. So um, the best part is, is, is basically doing that. We have um, parents who have been winners more than once, so there's no limit to how many times that they can receive a deposit. And saving for college is one of our ongoing themes both in SP3 and at ISL overall. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, Britt. Um, we are, even though we are a student loan company, we uh, reinvest in our community. Um, we have several scholarships components, um, SP3. And then this year, we kind of redesigned a couple of our scholarships into one, which also opens the door for undergrad college students to receive it. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, typically, scholarships are offered, you know, to those students who are um, entering college in the fall, you know, for our first year students. But with this particular program, both um, Iowa high school, so a high school student in one household, and then that I, that high school student's parent can enter. Um, and so can an undergraduate college student along with their parents. So they're basically, in one household, there are two opportunities to enter um, and be selected at random to receive this scholarship. Uh, it's open now through November 30th. Um, we'll, through the drawing after that, that date, we'll select 45 um, who have registered to receive a $1,000 deposit, which will specifically need to go to a College Savings Iowa 529 plan. Uh, we, we do partner quite frequently with um, our College Savings Iowa folks, and so this particular plan uh, requires that account to be open. But it's so easy to open one. Uh, I opened one for my granddaughter a couple of years ago. It takes about six, seven minutes to open it and only $25. And then I just have regular deposits occurring by EFT to her account. So it's building a really great um nest egg, you might call it, for her college. Uh, hopefully, it'll be in Iowa and not Texas where she resides because her grandfather and I would really love to have her here. But um, but again, but then we're going to, um, we yes, I see the question there. Yes, each high school student can uh, be entered into the drawing along with their parent. 
Um, we'll also have uh, some multiple choice questions after registration. They're very easy. I've done them. Not a, not a big pro a problem. And then we'll email tips throughout the program period. And then this uh, particular scholarship program will be repeated in the wintertime, starting in January. So we're really excited about that. Um, I will hang on for any questions that might come up in the chat. But other than that, you sophomores are in a really sweet spot, I, I like to call it. And uh, you have a lot of time to select those options, explore a lot of different things, and, and just have fun doing it. So good luck to y'all. Thanks, Shelley. Next up, we have uh, Liz from Iowa College Aid. Awesome. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Liz Yadoff with Iowa College Aid, like Britt mentioned. And I just wanted to um, give you guys a little bit more information about another service that we can offer you. So we do have a texting service where students and parents in grades 9 through 12 can opt in to receive texts um, to assist them through the college going process. So you can text one on one with a coach. It's a two way communication. So we can answer any questions that you might have as you navigate the college going process or how to prepare for college. Um, and I, like I said, we assist students and parents in grades nine through 12 uh, with this. Next slide, please. Awesome. Um, we set about one to two messages a month, I would say, for our 10th graders. Um, and that's regarding various college preparation topics. And then eventually when you um, become a senior, you receive specific messaging regarding scholarships, financial aid, submitting college applications, things of that nature. Um, so next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. So to sign up, you can go to our website at iowacollegeaid.gov slash virtual coach, or you can scan the QR code if you have your phones handy. Um, but otherwise, that's all I have, and I hope to be texting with you soon. Thank you, Liz. Um, I did see a question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, the slide presentation is attached to the recording on our website once it's posted, so you can access on our website. Um, so that ends the formal presentation part of tonight, and now we're going to transition to the Q&A with our panelists, and for that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Eric. Thank you all for joining me so far. Thanks, Britt. Appreciate it. We've got a, a panelist tonight. We've got a school counselor, a couple admissions folks, and a student already in college right now, and I'm going to go around and have everyone introduce themselves uh, initially here before we get into the questions uh, that uh, I've come up with uh, to be able to give to them. But we also will again want to hear from your questions you might have as well. So keep them questions coming um, in the chat box. Our, for our school counselor tonight, uh, we have Kristen from East High School here in Des Moines. And Kristen, I'll have you introduce yourself. Thanks, Eric. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Like Eric said, my name is Kristen Burrell, and I am a school counselor at East High School in Des Moines. Uh, my background, though, is in higher education, so I have worked for two different universities over the last seven years or so doing admissions and financial aid work, uh, one state school in Iowa and one out-of-state school in Arizona. So happy to answer any questions that you have about the high school side or kind of the in-state, out-of-state college side as well. Thanks again for being here tonight, Kristen. Appreciate it. And then we, uh, for on the admissions side, uh, one of them from Hawkeye Community College is Elizabeth. Hi, yeah, I'm Elizabeth Wilson. I am an admissions representative at Hawkeye Community College. I'm here to answer any questions that I can answer. Thank you very much. And then uh, a good friend who's been in the admissions game for a long time now, Tara. I've got to, got to say Tara from Wartburg. <laughs> Hello, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Tara Winter. I'm the Executive Director of Admissions at Wartburg College in Waverly. And I have been in college admissions for a little over 20 years. So happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you very much. Sorry, Tara, I'm dating ourselves, but I've I've been in for over 20 some years now as well. And it it just happens. I remember making fun of people that were uh, had that many years onto them when we first started and now we're in that position. So anyway, thank you for joining. And Tara brought along a student uh, today, tonight. Uh, Allie, Allie, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, hi. My name is 
<clears throat> excuse me, Allie McQueen. I'm a third year music education major at, here at Warburg College. Um, I'm interning in the admissions office, so I get to learn with Tara and the other counselors in that office through this semester. And I'm happy to answer any questions about um, the student side of the current college atmosphere and any questions you might have about that. Allie, I'm going to come right to you then. Any, anyway, I'm going to start off with you. Um, what are some advice that you would give? This is a sophomore tonight. What, what any advice that you would give to young high school students uh, that maybe you kind of wish you would have known at that age? Yeah, um, I would say my two big things is start talking to your parents about it. I think it's really easy to assume that they know what you're looking for and like vice versa. The parents might think that they know what the student is looking for, but be open and honest with your parents about your expectations and your passions and what you're really looking for. And going along with that, just start being observant. Be observant about what motivates you, what environments you like being in, what environments you don't like being in. I know for me, um, smaller communities was something that I had a really strong pull to in high school. And once I noticed that, I knew that I was looking for a smaller college environment. So start start observing how you react to different situations that you encounter as you go through these next couple years. Tara, coming back to you, sort of the same question, what's some advice that you would give younger students just beginning to think about life after high school and potentially going to college? I love that Ali said to talk to your parents. Um, I think that is some great advice. Um, you know, I think that a lot of students um, get in a habit of, you know, whatever college or university they've heard of or had friends to go to that have gone there. I think a lot of times they think, oh, I guess I'll just go there. And they kind of um, don't pursue any other options. And so I, I guess my best advice at this point would be really to keep your options open and do like Ali said, you know, talk about, you know, what you're passionate about, what kind of environment you want to be in, because there's a lot of different options out there for you. And, you know, you may not know what's out there until you start visiting and looking around. So the best thing that you can do is really um, keep your options open at this point. Thanks, Tara. Been some great answers so far, but Elizabeth, I still want to come to you. Um, any other advice on this to give to the sophomores just thinking about life after high school and looking at maybe planning to go to college? Yeah, um, Allie has some really good answers. She like really hit on it, but I really think going to campuses and getting a feel for what it feels like on campus. Um, so you can see, see if you can envision yourself there and going to classes and hanging out with people on campus to make sure it's a good fit for you. Um, you obviously are going to need to talk to your like your parents. That's really <laughs> agreed on that one. Um, but taking them with you and seeing if if you guys feel good on the campus, I feel like that's number one. Thanks. It's sort of the same line of a question to you, Kristen. Then following up, but what are some important things that students should be doing during their high, high school sophomore year? I think one of the biggest things that you can do as sophomores is to really get to know your school counselor because they are going to be just a wealth of knowledge for you, whether you want to go to a four-year college, a public or a private college, a two-year college, a trade program, an apprenticeship. They're going to know a lot about all of the post-secondary options that are available to you, and they can really help you get connected. Um, I think another big thing is to just be aware of your credits and the classes that you're taking. And like Britt mentioned previously, know what classes might be a prerequisite for a particular college, a particular major, just kind of being aware of those things and making sure that you are on track for graduation all four years throughout high school. Of course, making sure you pass your classes and do well. Um, and also getting to know your counselor and teachers, I think can be really important, especially when you get to that point where you are ready to apply to colleges and scholarships potentially, and they will ask oftentimes for letters of recommendation. So having those trusted adults in your high schools that know what you're like, uh, maybe on a sports team or in an extracurricular in the classroom, um, just building those relationships from freshman and sophomore year of high school can be really helpful when you need that assistance for letters of rec uh, heading into college or post-secondary life. 
Thank you, Kristen. Now, Elizabeth, you mentioned something about visiting campus and stuff. So let's kind of get into that topic. Um, when would you encourage students to start visiting college campuses if that's the career path they're going to end up taking or needing to go on to go on to school? And uh, besides when are they going to start it? What are some important things you would encourage them to do while they're on those campus visits and things to think about? Um, I would say probably around junior year would be the best time to start visiting, maybe even sophomore year. So you, number one, get a feel for it, like I was saying, but also just you can meet with faculty, you can meet with professors to see if that is a, the decision you want to make for a program. Um, I also think it helps to break down like what it is you're looking for in a college experience. Um, will you be able to juggle all the pieces, the housing, the food, um, the whatever it might be, the program you're choosing, the work you might be doing? Tara, same question to you. When should students start? And one thing I didn't, I'm asking so many questions in one in one question, four different parts or five different parts, but also how would students and families go about making a campus visit as well? Yeah, I agree. Um, getting on campus, I think is it's never too early to start. And whether that's a formal campus visit or a lot of places have opportunities for students to get on campus for different workshops, um, might be a summer camp, it could be something academic related or even athletics, um, music, we have all of those on our campus. And I think that gives students a, a good chance to kind of test the waters a little bit, even for those overnight camps. Um, you know, you get to sample the food, stay in the residence halls, and a lot of students feel that comfort, you know, once they have kind of um, established themselves for a few days on campus. And so if you have those opportunities, that's definitely a great thing to do. Um, but otherwise, you know, visiting campus, um, we have had some eighth graders visit. Um, so I, I don't necessarily recommend that for everyone, but, you know, sometimes if someone's on family vacation and they want to stop by, um, we always welcome anyone of any age. Um, but like Elizabeth said, you know, ask to do the things that you want to do, whether it's meeting with a coach, a professor, a music director, um, sitting in on a class. I mean, we we really want you to be able to picture yourself at Warburg. And so, um, you know, we want we want to tailor that visit exactly to your interests. Allie, can you let us know what were some of the pa pa uh, factors that are most important to you? In choosing a college, you mentioned about this, it sounds like the smaller atmosphere was one of them, but what were some of the other factors? And um, getting back to the, how did the campus visits help you make the decision on where you ended up? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm gonna start with the campus visit side just to tag along with what Tara was saying. Um, they, they already touched on, you know, it's never too early, um, but I would recommend don't wait until you know what you want to do. There's so many students who come in not knowing their major and that is 100% okay. And that is for the most, I, it's part of the college experience for the majority of students. So um, don't feel like you're alone in that. If you can't filter your college search by your major, filter it by other things. So something I filtered my searches by is um, a large amount of international students and international relations at a school. So that was something I was really interested in. Um, I mentioned the small community, but a, a smaller population size, that's something you can just type into Google and it'll, it'll give you a list of colleges and then put them on your list and go visit. So if it's not major specific, just still get out there and start getting the the vibe and the a read of the environment and then you can plug your major in later and see if that works for you. Um, the other big thing for me was just extracurricular activities. So um, again, the quick Google search, a follow on social media of the college, it, it makes a world of a difference if you get them kind of into your life and just start following them. So. Was there anything on any of your campus visits, Allie, that you did that kind of surprised you? at all on, on any of the visits that you did? Um, I, I think they were mostly pretty run of the mill visits. Um, I did do an overnight visit at St. Olaf in Minnesota. And 
um, the girl that I stayed with was she worked in the like she was a student worker in the admissions office. And that night she took me around her floor and introduced me to everybody. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, that was my junior year. So if that's something you're interested in, a lot of colleges do do those overnight visits and you get to, you know, talk to a college student about what you're looking for and what they've gotten out of the experience. So. Thank you. Um, going back to Kristen now, what are some events or activities that sophomores should be taking advantage of this year? Good question. I think we've maybe all heard the phrase, like give it the old college try. Um, and I challenge that a little bit to give it the old high school try. I feel like high schools, every high school offers different things in terms of extracurriculars and athletics and performing arts events and things like that. Um, but try some things out in high school. If there's an activity that you're curious about, if there's a new club at your school that you're curious about, try it, see if it would be a good fit for you. Um, so I think, again, as was mentioned earlier, the importance of maybe job shadowing, asking around aunts, uncles, neighbors, family, friends, what careers they have, what, you know, what are the pros and cons of the career? Are you able to job shadow them for a day to see whether or not that would be a good fit for you? attending any of the college fairs, um, high school visits for different colleges that come to maybe your counseling office. So again, every high school is a little bit different with the offerings there, but just taking advantage of meeting with a military recruiter, meeting with um, different companies who might offer apprenticeships, meeting with different community colleges, four-year colleges, again, in-state, out-of-state, just taking advantage of all of the resources. Um, and I always challenge younger students, freshmen, sophomores, when you go into a college fair, talk to at least one school that you've never heard of before. I think that can be a really great way to broaden your horizons a little bit, learn something new that maybe you weren't really thinking about, you know, a particular major or maybe the importance of study abroad. Maybe you didn't realize like, wow, that's actually really important to me. That's something I want out of my experience and talking to a particular college that maybe you know, encourages all students to study abroad at some point during their experience. Maybe that then becomes a really important part of your college search. So I always challenge students, talk to one school at least that you've never heard of before, ask questions um, and just really, you know, give it the old high school try and try different clubs, different organizations and just keep an open mind. Thanks. So we're talking about, again, sophomores. So they're getting, uh, starting their second year within high school. Tara, I'll ask this question for you at first. When evaluating an admissions application, how do the first two years of high school impact a student's admission? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is that they are important. So I know as sophomores, you've already got one year of high school under your, your belt already, but the sophomore year is really important too. Um, at the same time, I would also tell you that even if you had maybe a rough start to your high school experience that you have plenty of time to show improvement and increase your GPA. And so while we at the college level will look back all the way to your freshman year, all through your senior year, um, if we see progress, even like I said, if that freshman year was rough, if we see progress and you're doing well in your courses uh, progressively throughout the years, um, that's always going to be good, uh, good for you in that situation. Thanks, Tara. Elizabeth, I'll still uh, put that same question to you. Thoughts on the first couple of years uh, of the sophomore, freshman and sophomore classes and uh, how it looks for applications. Yeah, I would completely agree with what Tara said. There's always room for growth. And now that you know that you are your GPA is going to be looked at freshman, senior year, it's something that you can put focus on for yourself. Um, but I also think it gives you time to start thinking about taking college courses while you're still in high school and making sure that they're good fits for you and getting those kind of checked off the list. So it's not something that needs to be done when you do go to whatever college you choose. Looking ahead is you're you're still in in the early stages, so looking ahead is a great thing to do. Got to turn myself off mute. I see there. I, I strike one for me. I did that last night twice. I didn't strike out, but I'm going to try to stay in the batter's box here. What are some good examples of questions to ask on a college visit? Elizabeth, coming back to you, and then Tara, I'll come to you after that. 
Okay. Hmm. Let me think on this one. I think um, just asking about, I think safety on campus is a good thing to talk about when you're there. Um, making sure you know where public safety is in case you need it. Hopefully you will never need it, but you know, that's important. Um, but also where, like if it's a student, like if maybe a student is taking you on, on a tour, um, where they like to hang out, where they like to study, um, places around campus that are good places for students to hang out and be. Tara, same question to you. What are some good examples of questions to ask when on a college visit? I'm actually going to flip that question back to you and say, what's most important to you? Um, because every student is going to be different. And, you know, every college admissions office is going to have you know, their general information pitch, you know, that we're going to give you a rundown of the types of classes that you'll take, um, the major that you're interested in, activities, all of those things. But none of that matters if some of those aren't priorities to you as a student and family. And so, you know, one of the things that we like to do when we meet with families um, and at, we just ask the student, what's important to you in, in your college search, you know, is is size important? Well, we'll then we'll talk about, you know, at, at, for Warburg, like, here's why our class size is important. And here's what that means to you. Um, you know, our extracurricular activities important, then we'll focus on that. Um, you know, as Elizabeth said, safety, um, you know, maybe your particular major, um, you know, it could be any number of things, but we really want to know how, how, um, you know, you prioritize your college search, because we, we want to tailor our our pitch to you um, and how that would fit in um, with, with your needs. Kristen, I'm going to ask you the same question since not only being a school counselor, you went in higher ed as well. Anything to add on, on maybe some good questions to ask on a campus visit? I would say, I mean, being a former financial aid counselor too, the financial fit of every college is just a huge part of the college search. So I always encourage students, especially when they are sophomores, juniors, seniors, really thinking about where they want to apply, um, thinking about what scholarships might be available um, and kind of what those opportunities are to decide and kind of have that conversation early on, whether or not the school is gonna be a good financial fit for the student and family, um, but then also encouraging students to, like Allie had said, talk to your parents <laughs> about, hey, what does this look like in terms of a budget for college? Um, you know, do you have parents willing to take a loan on your behalf? Or um, what does your situation look like so that you know going into it, what is a good financial fit for you? And that can kind of tailor the search as well. So I think asking college reps about scholarships that they may be eligible for um, and what average cost would be for students um, in state versus out of state. So I think focusing on cost and scholarship opportunities can be really important early on so that students can be prepared when they apply to those schools. Thanks, Kristen. And my colleague Carrie in the uh, webinar chat did put in a worksheet that we have for students that they can use on campus visit that has questions and space to take notes in that. She got the link there uh, listed in the chat on where to download that. So uh, great questions. And please, again, keep those questions uh, coming in that you would like to like to know. Um, Allie, I'm going to go back to you right now for a question on here. Um, what was a high school experience that you felt helped prepare you for your transition into college? Um, it is really hard to narrow it down to a specific experience. Um, at my high school, we were required to take core classes all four years. And going into senior year, it was something I dreaded. I felt like I should have been done by now, you know. Um, but it, it really does keep you engaged. It keeps you alert. It keeps you like in an academic mindset. And for me, going into a music degree after high school, um, it just kind of kept me in that student mindset. Whereas if you do choose to take that break, um, you can kind of automatically have this switch out and it's hard to get back into that when you get to your college experience. Um, another thing that this is a very general statement and I, again, it's hard to narrow it down to one experience, but stay involved. It's, it's hard um, getting 
towards your junior and senior year, maybe you want to back off the activities. But if you're um, if you are doing a healthy level of extracurriculars and sports, um, as long as you're not overwhelmed, um, staying involved in those can really prepare you for all the different experiences that you'll have at college. So um, you'll learn to multitask, you'll learn to use your time well. Um, it's just very important to stay involved even when it feels like maybe you're done with the high school experience and ready for college, really staying in that high school experience is gonna get you prepared. Thank you. Now, not to uh, be negative, I've said this the last two nights because we've used this question as well for each time, but coming back to Kristen, um, what are some mistakes that you see students make as high school sophomores? Um, but also you can expound as high school juniors or seniors because we want to be proactive so they don't do that either during their uh, junior and senior year. Sure, that's a good question. I think someone kind of alluded to this earlier, but really being your own person and not wanting to take certain classes just because your friends are or not wanting to apply to certain colleges because your best friend is uh, really thinking about what your values are and what matters to you, not only like in your college search, but in the classes that you're taking in high school. Um, I've been surprised at how many students just want to take a particular elective or even an AP class or a core class that maybe they don't need and maybe they're not interested in studying it in college, but they have friends that are in that class. And so they're like, it's okay, I'll take this AP class that I'm not super interested in <laughs> just because then I can be with my friends. So I think it's really important to, again, just kind of think about, okay, this is my career, this is my future academic life, and what is going to help me be successful. And you can hang out with your friends after school, you don't have to have every single class aligned with your friends. Um, so I think just focus on trying those classes and those electives that are really important to you and reflecting on what those might be. And I think same goes for different clubs and organizations. Um, I feel like I've seen some students maybe miss out on joining a new club just because they didn't know anyone in that club and they'd rather join a club that they have a group of friends in. But if it's something deep down that you know, like, hey, I'm really interested in crocheting and there's this new crochet club, but none of my friends are in it, still join that club and see if you can make new friends with people that, you know, have those similar interests as you. So I think limiting yourself based on what your friends are doing can be um, a mistake that students make throughout high school. Thank you. We've, we've got some questions in there. I know the URL that a uh, couple of folks said wasn't opening well. So my colleague just put in a new one there. See if you can try that one and see if that works. But there was also a question that was directed towards Allie. Uh, Allie, someone wanted to ask you, looking back, is there anything now about getting that anything you now about getting the most out of high school searching for a college that you wish you knew back then? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough question. I think I, I would have wanted somebody three years ago to tell me to be selfish. And I know that that sounds that word has a really negative connotation, but just like what Kristen was talking about, um, thinking for yourself and not for your friends and thinking for yourself and not for ease of academic load. I, I'm not saying to overwhelm yourself, but um, see, see if you can push yourself, see if you can try new things. Um, and just like I said earlier, just be observant, try to self-reflect as much as you can and think about what you like and what you don't like. Um, that's something I really struggled with even after I got to college. So it, it takes a while to get into the practice of that. So the sooner that you can become more aware of what you appreciate and what um, environments or experiences you have not enjoyed, the sooner you can be aware of those, the better. Strike two, did it again there. There's back off mute. Allie, coming back to you, did you do any type of job shadowing or internship while you were in high school? I did. So like I said, I'm a music education major. Um, my second semester of my senior year, I was at a nonprofit music organization. So um, it was a community children's choir. 
And it really pushed me um, to see kind of the administrative side. Um, if there's any high school students listening that are in music or interested, a lot of what you see going through your school experience is just the music side though. So the rehearsals, the performances, and that is great. That is a great experience for your extracurriculars that you'll be involved in at college. But if you can get any job shadowing in an actual office or with an actual profess professional organization, you get to see the administrative side and see, you know, all the behind the scenes that you're not going to see as just a normal participant. So that was really important to me. It also pushes you to really work on your time management and it's something outside of school, which is also very exciting. Thank you. Kristen, picking, piggybacking off of that question, I know it can be different a little bit at every high school, but can you talk about the opportunities that students probably have that they may not know about in job shadowing or doing internships in high school? Sure. So. I think every community will be a little bit different with the types of opportunities that are already pre-established for students, but I always encourage students if they, you know, at the school that I'm at, we have lots of military recruiters, lots of companies and organizations that we know and that we partner with and colleges coming to visit to meet with students one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, um, but I always encourage students, like if there's a particular company, organization, nonprofit group, whatever it may be that you are interested in doing job shadowing with or volunteering for, and maybe it's not something that we have that pre-established partnership, still go talk to your counselor and your school administrators about, okay, this is something that I might be interested in as a career. Can you help me, you know, reach out to this organization to get that opportunity set up for me? Um, and I've always been very pleasantly surprised with how willing community organizations and um, companies are happy to have high school students job shadow. And even if it's just doing a Zoom meeting or a phone call in your counselor's office with you and your counselor and maybe a company that someday you might wanna work at or do an internship for, just having that conversation, um, I've been surprised at how willing companies are, are to just meet with high school students, share their expertise, share what it would be like for them to work at a company or do an internship there. Um, and so I think that talk to your counselor. If it's not something that's already pre-established at your school, they're usually more than happy to reach out on your behalf or encourage you to reach out and kind of set up those opportunities if they don't already exist. So just don't be shy to ask for those opportunities because again, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with um, how everyone is willing to help high school students figure out what it is that they want to do for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Strike three. Three, I, no, foul tip, foul tip, <laughs> still alive. Um, coming back to you right away uh, again, uh, it might even be a step before the job would be for job shadowing their internship, but some parents might be wondering, I've got a student that has no idea what they want to do. What is available or the resources that are out there for him to even begin investigating it? Sure. So I think there's a lot of different like career interest inventories, like Britt talked about at the very beginning that um, school counselors can encourage students to take. Um, that will just give them different ideas of what types of things they might be interested in. Um, I always encourage students, like sometimes it's just as important to cross things off of the list that they don't want than it can be to add things to the list that they might want. So just having conversations with um, adults in their lives about the types of jobs, the types of career changes they may have had, um, and just seeing what conversations can pique their interest. Um, it's always interesting to me too. like ask all of your teachers, just pick a day, go into every single class a minute early, ask your teachers, hey, like what brought you to teaching? How did you know that this is where you wanted to be? And I think students are always surprised at how teachers maybe haven't always been teachers. And so they'll talk about how maybe they started in one career and then they switched into this one or something, you know, really inspired them to go a different path and then go a different path again, and then led them ultimately to the career they have now. So I think it's just as easy as having conversations with adults in your life, students about what really inspired you to pick your career field. And if you changed your mind, 
what inspired you to change your mind and who was, you know, an important player in that, that maybe, um, kind of helped you see something a different way. Um, so I think just having conversations can be really helpful. Um, and then also like, again, going to college fairs, meeting with reps and just asking questions, um, just about their own personal journeys of how they decided, like how we're asking Allie, how did you decide on Warburg and how did you decide on your major? And, just have those conversations, not only with Allie, but ask those questions to other people in your life too, and just kind of see if anything really resonates with you. Thank you. We did have another question come in. Uh, Tara, I'm going to go to you on this one at first, and then I'll come to Elizabeth. As a parent, it's been more than 20 years since I began college. What are some of the biggest changes that parents should be aware of that may not have been a concern 20 years ago? I think that's a great question. And I think cost is probably the first thing that comes to my mind. And that one thing I hope that students and parents understand is that every college has a sticker price, but that is likely not what anyone is paying. And so I think one of the most important things that you can do when you look at colleges and universities is don't look at that sticker price and, cost, and cross someone off your list just because of that sticker price. Um, you can ask the question and I mean, colleges are gonna be prepared to answer this. Um, you know, okay, this is your sticker cost and what, what do students actually pay on average? Everybody's gonna be able to tell you that because they all have scholarships, grants, different things that students can take advantage of. So I would just say, make sure that you're not crossing anyone off your list until you go through the process. Elizabeth, same question to you, even if it's five, 10, 15 years ago, whatever it might be, what could be a little different? Um, I would actually say like the format. Um, I feel like there's often a lot more online classes now, um, which some students vibe with, some do not. So I think knowing what, what format is good for you, if you are a student who needs to be in a classroom in front of a professor, if you need hands-on learning, if you are able to do online classes, what works for you? and your student and knowing that ahead of time. So you can go ahead when you are registering for classes and make those decisions. Now, again, when we're talking about and had Kristen talking about the different career options, Britt mentioned it earlier, looking or the resources to be looking up careers and stuff. We want to find the students that have the right path for them. That can be college, that could be apprenticeships or other types of still education beyond high school. Uh, but when we are talking about students that are looking at careers and majors in colleges, a lot of times if they were moving on at least to a four-year school, something that they were going to need to do junior year and maybe senior year was the ACT or SAT. To I, Elizabeth, I will ask you after I ask Tara again on this to maybe how you look at it, which could be which will be different than maybe um, Wartburg, uh, but there's a lot of schools that are test optional out there. And what does that mean for families? So Tara, can you explain, at least at Wartburg, how you would look at students when they should take the ACT, SAT, any advice, and then be in a test optional school, what that means? Sure. Um, as Eric mentioned, um, many, many schools, um, particularly in Iowa, um, are test optional now. And so I know that that's kind of a, a buzz phrase, um, if you will. And sometimes that means something a little bit different at every school. So um, don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, for Wartburg, test optional means if you want to send us your scores, great. Um, the ways that can help you is it could increase your possible scholarship, um, your academic scholarship. It could give you credit um, in, you know, some areas. So like if you had a higher score in English, you know, you might be able to start in a higher English course. At the same time, uh, I want you to know that if you submit it, it's not going to hurt you. So if we see that your ACT or SAT score is pulling your, down your academic uh, scholarship, we're not going to use it. So we will only use it if it helps you as the student. So um, that being said, you know, I think about, you know, anywhere from 50 to 60% of our incoming class each year does submit it. Um, I always encourage you to, to, you know, to take the test, um, to submit it, just because you never know, you know, what schools ultimately might, might be on your list. Um, I, I think a lot of times people will take that test the first time, maybe during their junior year, um, then maybe take a couple more college prep type courses in high school, maybe take it once again. 
um, the second time around. I think most of the time we see an increase from the first to the second time. So all that being said, if you know, you're know you a very nervous test taker, uh, a lot of us are, that's totally fine and you don't have to take it. But I think taking it at one point does just open yourself up to a lot of options. Elizabeth, same question to you how maybe the ACT, SAT, typically here in the Midwest, it's the ACT, but how that might be looked at at, at Hawkeye. And if it's not utilized, are there any other placement tests that students may need to take? Yeah, um, we actually do not need the ACT scores. Um, like you said, test optional. Um, so we have an Alex exam that is for math and like an AccuPlacer based on your GPA coming in that you would take that just places you um, in in courses that are appropriate for your level. Um, and those, like I said, based on your GPA, um, the AccuPlacer is optional. Um, so it kind of just depends on what you come in with your GPA. So knowing that ahead of time and being prepared, like you said, people do have test anxiety. Um, so being prepared, you might have to take a test. Um, we do, we do um, allow students to take it um, at home as well. So it's not like very strict test taking protocol, but it is it is something that there we do still have. Thank you. That is something I know what I can. Our official response would be we would encourage students to at least take it once during their junior year and and then you know retake it again maybe their senior year. But knowing as Tara and Elizabeth had said it's not anything really that can hurt you anymore because, I mean, most colleges now seem to be test optional. Uh, the one thing is that in some cases, though, it could help you and you may not realize it. Two years ago, there was a student who had scored a 34 on an ACT and did not submit it into the school here in Iowa that they were looking at going to that could have got them a full tuition ride because they didn't get a 36. They Well, it wasn't a perfect score. A 34 is a good score. That would be something I can't believe any college you wouldn't submit it in. And so, um, we just want to make sure that you do know that, but there's no harm. And as Tara said, taking again the second time, sometimes you might raise it. There has been students that have gotten a worse score second time, but almost all colleges take your highest score, whichever one you get, if it is something that you submit. So like to get that information out there because it is looked at different ways. You should check with each individual admissions office about that and have that question. Uh, even on your campus visits, that would be a good one that I'm sure we've got listed uh, to ask on those. Um, I am going to put out a last call for any questions uh, from those that are uh, online right now, if there is anything else. And while we're doing that, the last thing that I'm going to ask uh, everyone, and Kristen, I'm going to start with you. The last thing that I want to ask everyone is, what is your last bit of advice, maybe emphasizing something we've already talked about? Or maybe there's an area that we didn't talk about that you would want to give to students and families that are sophomore right now. What is one last bit of advice that you would want to give them? Sure. So I'll throw in something a little new um, that I was thinking about is it's a good time to start practice your writing skills. I know when I was starting my college search, like I had written essays, of course, like in English classes and whatnot, but I feel like the style of writing for like a scholarship essay or a college essay is a little bit different than writing a book report or something of that nature. So my piece of advice would be to kind of start thinking about um, things that have happened in your life or stories that you might want to share that really depict who you are to colleges um, and kind of practice that creative writing style that you might use for essays, for college applications or, um, or scholarship applications too. So I think yeah, that essay writing piece is a little bit different than the traditional essay writing that you might be used to from your traditional English classes in high school. Thank you, Kristen, and thanks again for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, Elizabeth, coming to you, what's one bit of advice we've talked about to, to emphasize or maybe haven't talked about that you still would give sophomore uh, students and families? Um, I have just a little piece of advice that I wish I had known when I was like preparing for college. Um, what you do in high school does affect how you how well you do in college. Um, I didn't know that. And I kind of just was in high school 
because I was in high school. Um, so I feel like preparing, knowing ahead of time, really asking yourselves questions about like what is important, um, what what you're interested in. Like Ali was saying earlier, knowing what you like and what you don't like is very important. And the sooner you figure it out, the better. Great point. Great point. I think figuring out what we don't like can be just as important as what we do like. And, and that is a part of the process. I mean, I think about that when we talk about job shadowing or internships, finding out something you don't like to do, that's still good. You're still finding something out there uh, that can help you in the future. Elizabeth, again, thank you very much for being here tonight and participating. Really appreciate it. Tara, same question to you. Well, I'm just going to keep it really simple here and say you need to make a decision about your next step after high school um, with whatever makes you the most happy. Um, you know, as, as Kristen mentioned earlier, like following friends for certain reasons, um, like I get that. I've got a 13 year old. I know that she wants to do the things that her friends do, but you have to do what makes you happy. Um, and so back to our earlier point, visiting colleges, um, you know, visiting places that you can really picture yourself at, um, and also making sure that, you know, you're, a, you're at a place that can support you. And it's real easy to get caught up in the excitement of being on a college campus. Maybe it's a big, you know, game day or like a bunch of people are on campus for an event or whatever it may be. That That's really cool and really exciting. but where do you want to be on your worst day when you're homesick? Maybe it's snowing in Iowa and, you know, you're just kind of missing home or wishing you could be doing something else. Like who is what what college is going to be there to take care of you when you, you know, maybe fail your first test or something and who is going to be able to support you? And you have to find that place that works the best for you. Um Best day, worst day, that's what we talk about a lot at Warburg, and we want to make sure that students find the place that can see them the best. Thank you, Tara, and thanks again for being a part of uh, this program tonight. Really appreciate it. Allie, we're coming to you uh, at the end here to hear the other ones, and I I'm sure your advice students can really take heart to what some advice that maybe you want to reemphasize that you've talked about tonight or maybe something that you haven't to give to them. Yeah, um, it's gonna sound so cliche, but this is the time in your life where you really need to start believing in yourself. And if you don't yet, it's like now is the time. So do what you can to discover what you like about yourself and how you choose to carry yourself and how you choose to represent yourself matters more than you know, um, and even just in your high school experience, um, start considering how you're carrying yourself in your classes and to your teachers. Kristen talked about letters of recommendation. Um, it seems so far away, but those teachers are observing you and it's just really good practice to start building that character that you wanna be. So be observant and consider your identity and believe in yourself. Well, thank you, Allie, and thank you for taking the time to be here tonight, and that I know you've probably got a very busy schedule there as a third-year college student, so I hope your third year goes well, as well as your fourth, and and uh, and moving on, but thank you for all of, all of your advice. Um, again, last second for any other questions in here before we end the webinar, um, I just wanted to give a, a little bit of advice as well. Um, one of the things is uh, you have seen tonight uh, a lot of we, we've thrown out a, a lot to you, and this can seem like an overwhelming process, but there are so many resources at your fingertips to do. We talked about it with the SP3 program and keeping you on track going from sophomore more year on, uh, the eval service for parents. We've talked about the texting service from Iowa College Aid, a great service, another resource to do that. You all are going to have school counselors like Kristen at your school that can help you. And if they're not sure about answers, they're going to guide you in the right direction on where to get those questions answered. And sometimes that guidance is going to be to the admissions counselors they know, like Tara and Elizabeth uh, and that. Uh, but as you're going th along through this process, if any of you as students and families can talk to parents or students that are already in college, I think that that can be some great advice as well. Now, to be honest with you, they don't always know all the answers. And if there's something that seems, wait a minute, is that right? 
ask others to find out from the admissions office, but I still think that they can give some perspectives um, uh, for you as well. So uh, you've got so many resources at your uh, disposal. Do not let this something be a, a, uh, a, a, uh, a, a problem or something that causes you stress. I'm sorry, I'm looking for that S word, stress there uh, as you're going through this. Enjoy it, have fun. And that's both students and parents as well. Um, I'm a parent of a high school senior and have been going through this the last couple of years. And you would think, I mean, in my position that I'm in that it's still totally different when you're on the parent side and it's been a lot of fun. And right before this, daughter got a couple of acceptance letters into colleges and it's wonderful to celebrate that in the process you're going through and do that but there are going to be questions we have as well as well as we know that you will too just know you're not alone and plenty of resources out there and do not be afraid in asking questions along the way all right i am double checking and in the chat box i do not see anything any other questions um, at all right now so i think we're going to go ahead and in the webinar, we appreciate the time that, again, Kristen, Tara, Allie, and Elizabeth uh, took with us, as well as Shelly and Liz and my colleagues, Britt and Carrie being here and uh, putting information into there. This is going to be a recording. Some of you might be watching the recording. Do not hesitate to contact us at ICANN. Uh, also, if you have questions or would like to set up an appointment too, not only now as sophomores, but as you're going along through this journey in high school and looking for life after that and what it means uh, for your student. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great sophomore year. And please contact any of us if you have questions as you're going through this. Thank you very much.